Hello everyone, it's been a while. Toad Wonderland back here again for more of the video game collection that I have that, well, this is more or less an update. Before I move on to the actual games though, real quick, this is something that my grandmother picked up for me. It is a collection of Super Mario Brothers figurines. And look real close at this last one, Lakitu. That is so freaking derpy looking. You can actually see, there's like a spot in between his eyes. He almost looks like an Indian. <laughs> I'm already starting with the racist comments. Kappa face. Anyway, um, yeah, this is apparently what a Lakitu looks like without having glasses. That's the only thing I can figure from that. But other than that, though, all the other figurines look nice. Uh, it was $10. So, what do you guys think? Did my grandmother have a good purchase here or what? <laughs> I just thought that was something fun I'd share. But yeah, that was uh, something random. Anyway, this is back to N64 stuff. You'll notice, just by looking at the background even, everything's different because I have a new PC, finally. That's pretty much what's been slowing me down for the past, uh, I wanna say a month, maybe. I've had a couple videos that I put out there, but that's because they were already pre-recorded uh, up to a certain point until I was able to find out that once I got to the new PC, I could actually just finish some stuff up with the old video editing program and move on to the new. Because I'm actually switching video editing programs too. I, I don't want to use Windows Movie Maker anymore unless I absolutely have to. But I'm looking at other options like Sony Vegas and Adobe and whatever else I can find that other people might suggest. Uh, but right now, like I said, we're back to the video game series. And you're going to be able to stare at Link crushing Navi in its awesome glory, because why not? Given that, it's some eye candy for you. Uh, there is 13 more games left for N64. <laughs> Quite a lucky number. Another Kappa face inserted here. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we got, for the first one, let me put the one stack aside. Okay, there we go. Uh, first one is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. I've only played maybe five minutes or so of this because I was curious what this game is all about. It already had a save data on it, and when I played it, it was really freaking hard. I think it was in Geonosis or somewhere like that. Either that or Tatooine. But whatever it was, you had to like get on this really fast bullet train that was going through a certain part of the planet and there was like all these platforms you had to dodge i was dying from the platforms more than the actual enemies on the train it was insane so i don't know what the full game's like but <laughs> the five minutes of experience with the preloaded save file yeah not so great okay i'll go ahead and grab uh, both of these because here we have rugrats in scavenger hunt i almost said the wrong game there but yeah this is rugrats scavenger hunt uh, and this one is Rugrats in Paris the movie, which is a black cart, as you can tell by looking at the color of it. <laughs> okay, I, I gotta stop with the uh, unintended racial slurs. <laughs> black. Oh well. Just ignore that. Anyway, here we have Rugrats Scavenger Hunt. This is pretty much uh, a game where Mario Party meets Rugrats, or vice versa, however you'd like to describe it. Um... For this one, there's really not a whole lot of content on it. This was a cheap buy. It was like two bucks. Uh, these were actually like buy two, get two free. There's some other games here in the stack that I think that were included in that, if I remember right. But yeah, this one, it only has three boards on it. And there really aren't many games, uh, but it still has a similar feature where you use cookies to pay for your way around and using magnifying glasses to find treasures that are hidden. That's why it's called Scavenger Hunt. It's kind of like having stars in a sense, really. Kind of like with the Mario Party games. But yeah, this one, it's not that long. You could probably beat it in maybe like an hour. I do know that uh, right off the top of my head, Madame Moria made a video series of this. I think it was on both her channel and the Five Lost Levels, if I remember right. Uh, but this game, she beat it like maybe a couple videos. Uh, that pretty much just demonstrates, you know... It, it can be fun, it's just there's really not a whole lot to do on it. But I still give props to her for showing it, because, you know, if you're a Rugrats fan, you're obviously going to love this game to death. Same with Rugrats in Paris, the movie. It's, in my uh, 
first impression, it is a lot longer than Rugrats Scavenger Hunt. This is an actual, like, platforming slash action slash adventure game. So, I haven't really played too much of it, but it's pretty much got more extensive content than what Rugrats Scavenger Hunt does. Can't really say too much otherwise about it. And I promise there's first party titles in the stack, don't worry guys. So even that got included in the update. Such as this one, F-Zero X. This has uh, Captain Falcon in it for those who aren't familiar from Super Smash Brothers. Well, this actually came before Super Smash Brothers, but still you get the point. Most people didn't know um, who Captain Falcon really was, like unless they played at the F-Zero games. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the N64 one, I just got it. But it's really fast paced, uh, it moves fast, and it's a lot of fun to play. I just haven't played this one in particular too much. I'm more familiar with the GameCube one, which we'll get to once I get to that part of the collection. But yeah, this is a fun game overall. Definitely recommend. Uh, next is Tetrisphere. This, and I think like Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards, are perhaps the only two games I can think of for the N64 that even use the D-pad. I don't know why. No one really played this game though, and I don't have too much to say about it otherwise. It's Tetrisphere. I mean, look up a video about it and you'll see what I mean. I really can't describe it too well. Uh, you just have to watch a video and see what it's like. Uh, at the bottom, we kind of have shovelware here. Uh, I'm trying to read the title. Xena Warrior Princess, The Talesman of Fate. Uh, this is like a, uh, a fighting arcade style game, if I remember right. I haven't played it since I picked it up, actually. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's what this was about. It seemed fun, now. Uh, just, you know, since it's a arcade-style fighting game, it's obviously short. It doesn't really have a lot of gameplay modes on it. I think there's only, like, a single-player campaign and then free mode, and that's about it. There's not a lot to do on it. Uh, here's Backstage... Ugh, can't even talk. Backstage Assault. Yeah, <laughs> Just ignore the fact that I own it. I pretty much got it as a joke. Um, but basically, the reason I have this is because uh, I actually watched a live stream of someone playing it, and they did some really funny things with this game. Like, I'm not into wrestling by any means, but I still thought it was really funny uh, just from what I'd seen of the gameplay when I saw the live stream of it. Because otherwise, I probably wouldn't get this. Like I said, it's just a joke, really. <laughs> Because uh, it is shovelware, in my opinion, it is anyway. Uh, there was customization on it, though, that kind of took me by surprise, so I really can't fault it at that. But, uh, I don't know. Even just the name of the game itself, Backstage Assault, it just sounds like, I don't know, here we go with the uh, stereotyping and crap, but, uh, a gay, rapey game? I don't know how to describe it, because it's wrestling. Yeah, we'll ignore that. Ignore that. We're just going to move on to the next stack. Very, very quietly. And it's going to be another sports game. Though this one is a fun one. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Sequel to the first Tony Hawk game that I showed in a previous video. This one kind of suffers the same issue in the fact that uh, it doesn't really last a long time as far as uh, content wise. Because this one... It might take a little bit longer, because some of the high score missions are a little bit more difficult to get the achievements unlocked for. But it still suffers the same problem with only having like very few stages to pick from. And you can beat the game relatively fast. I kind of debate with myself if you can beat it in an hour, because there is some tricks that are a little bit more polished on here that you have to get accustomed to. As well as maybe a couple new... Uh, uh, mechanics and different things like that. It still uses the C buttons like the first game did, but still, this game you could still beat, like I said, probably, I want to say a little bit over an hour, maybe like two or three at the most if you want 100% everything. Okay, here we have another first party title, yay! <laughs> I told you guys there were some in the sack, but here we have Mario Tennis, or as he says in the game, Mario Tennis! I yeah, the intro just has a really strange opening. And, like, I was on the character select screen, and I picked Waluigi, and Charles Martinet had this really, really weird voice for Waluigi. He doesn't even sound the same as what he does in other games. But for those who didn't know, the reason I brought up Waluigi was because this game actually introduced Waluigi. This is his very first game where he debuted in. Uh, not Mario Party 3. Most people 
incorrectly say Mario Party 3 was Waluigi's introduction, it's not. Because Mario Tennis actually came before that. So yeah, here's the origins of Waluigi, for those who didn't know. Uh, this is actually fun to play though. It has like a, a items mode on it where you play in like Bowser's Castle. And it's kind of like feels like Mario Kart meets a sports game in a sense with tennis. But that's probably one of the more fun parts of the game. It has some other standard stuff like the actual tennis and the ring challenge and things like that. Uh, it surprised me though because like I said earlier, I'm not really one who's into sports games. But this one was a lot of fun to play. I do recommend it. Like I said, just took me by surprise. Uh, we're down to the last four. They still have the price tags on them because these were the most recent purchases I had. I uh, got them maybe, eh, I want to say a week ago by the time I'm recording this. Uh, here we have Cruisin' World. I probably would have completely overlooked seeing this in the store, but I was with my friend. He pointed it out to me and I'm like, oh my god, I gotta get it. Because I actually do know about this game. Uh, I talked about it a little bit briefly in one of my Let's Plays, uh, Ocarina of Time. The reason I brought that up was because this is the same game, and you can probably even see like the Egypt statue there. This is the same game that actually has the same original Fire Temple songs, Islamic chanting in it, with the uh, Allah Allah. Well, I probably shouldn't duplicate it, but <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it has that same chanting in it for the uh, Egypt level as it does for the original Fire Temple in. Ocarina of Time, the version 1.0 of the game, before they replaced the song with a Gregorian choir instead of the Islam chanting. But yeah, uh, this is the game. Uh, it's a racing game, <laughs> besides the main uh, or getting to the main point, I should say. Uh, it's a racing game, hence why it's called Cruisin'. Uh, it's definitely fun to play, though. Uh, this had a pretty good rep back in the day, and I think there's even still recommendations I see by people for this game, which is kind of awesome. Because, it, it, you know, racing games are kind of hit or miss, especially with older consoles. But anyway, next game we have here is 007 The World Is Not Enough. Uh, it's a blue cartridge. i seen a gray one at the store, though, for the same price. Uh, but I'm not, like, a hardcore collector, so I didn't get both versions of the game. As far as, like, the cartridge color and all that fun stuff. But yeah, they... I have the blue card, for anyone who's wondering. Uh, this isn't the one that... Uh, a lot of people really played though. Most people play Goldeneye, which I could have got while I was there, but it seemed at the store I was at, it seemed like it was maybe just a smidge higher than what I could find for it online. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but I didn't get it while I was there. I will someday though. Uh, but yeah, Goldeneye is the one that a lot of people played as far as uh, when it comes to the 007 series. Uh, I haven't really played this one too much though. I played a little of uh, Goldeneye, but that was because a friend of mine owned it. Uh, I didn't have it though when I was growing up. So I can't say too much about this particular game. Oh man! <laughs> oh damn it all. <laughs> Superman 64. Do I have to talk about this game? Seriously. And if you don't know why I'm chuckling about it, seriously, look it up. Superman 64 is regarded as being one of the absolute worst video games in history. And do you see this price tag here? $3.98? I still think that's too much for this game, but I still got it anyway because of the reputation it has. This is one of those games where everything is wrong about the game. He flies through rings and sometimes he doesn't respond correctly. It has some other graphical bugs that go haywire, Superman doesn't respond to the controls correctly. There's just a lot of problems with this game. It was obviously rushed just from playing it. You could tell they did not do any kind of uh, debugging with the actual software title. But yeah, <laughs> Proton John is the uh, Let's Player that comes to mind when I think of this game, because that's uh, who's doing a LP of it, uh, or he was rather, I don't know what he intends to go back to at any time or not. But, uh, yeah, Superman 64. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> the final game in the collection here is Hey You Pikachu. Uh, it was only $4.98, is what the sticker says. Uh, interesting thing. I don't know why. I can find the game pretty much everywhere, but I can't find the microphone that's needed to play it. So, I haven't really been able to play this. <laughs> and you do need the microphone. And I 
surprisingly did have some lady at another gaming store not the one where i got this from but it was a different gaming store when i was looking around and she saw this game and i asked her did they have the microphone for it and she's like i think you can use the gamecube mic and i'm like no there's no memory card slot on the n64 she's like why well, i think they use the same connections it's like nope <laughs> The only thing that's similar between the N64 and GameCube is AV cables, and that is it. There's nothing as far as memory card slots or anything like that. So yeah, Hey Pikachu. It's a spin-off game of the main Pokemon series where you talk to Pikachu and do things in the game. I just haven't been able to do it because I don't have the microphone. It's a piece of shit and it breaks. That's pretty much why Nowhere has it, I'm sure. But anyway, that'd be the end of the collection. I don't even know how many N64 games I have in all, but my god. <laughs> I surprisingly have a lot. I probably have like one-fifth or maybe one-sixth of the library, like of all the games for the system. Because N64 had about 300 games, I believe. 303 to be exact, if you count like POW exclusives and stuff. But I have a good many, and I'm finally glad that I got through it all. And this is a long video in itself, so I'm going to end things here. Again, enjoy the new setup. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a time paradox where I'm, I already have, like, two other consoles recorded. I think two consoles, if I remember right. I don't know. But my point is, you might see me uh, showing another console where it's going to have the old setup without the PCs on the desk. But that's because I record it ahead of time. So, yay, back and forth into the future. <laughs> But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. That would be my N64 collection. This is Toad Wonderland. I will see you guys next time for whatever console I decide to show. It might be a handheld. I might move on to Sony stuff. I'm still not sure yet. We'll find out, though. Till then, see you guys later. Peace.